What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here, welcoming you to part one of a brand new modded Total Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires campaign, SFO Grimhammer 3 Britonia. The community votes are in, and King Lewin himself shall lead his knights in the noble quest of peasant oppression. Hey, if crushing filthy peasants is wrong, I don't want to be right. SFO's latest update also gave us a Bretonia rework, which I'm pretty excited to see, but before we do, a few notes. If you enjoy this content and want to see it updated regularly, don't forget to drop those likes and comments for the algorithm down below, as scheduling and campaign length are tied to engagement. Huge shout out to Venris and the SFO team for their work on my favorite Total Warhammer mod, and as always, the biggest shout out to you guys for your comments and support. YouTube's my hobby, I do it for fun after work, and your comments keep it fun and keep this channel alive. Anyway, we're going to take a quick look at the faction difficulty and the uh, setup, uh, so do feel free to skip to gameplay if you're not interested in that. Alright, so what do we got here? There's a bunch of stuff that we'll find out as we actually play the game. Unique techs, landmark and green knight skills, errantry missions with extending rewards, chivalry bonuses, uh, all knightly vows unlocked. These are all things that we'll discuss when we're actually in the game as it's uh, kind of unclear as to exactly what they are from here. What we can clearly see is the plus five levels for paladins and sons of Bretonia heroes, the army ability, and the Lion of Bretonia, which seems pretty darn decent. Melee damage reflection is always nice. Mass and missile resistance, great for that charge of uh, Bretonian cavalry. And in addition to that, we have the Valor earned in battle, which is a currency that will allow us to upgrade and uh, customize our units of knights a little bit. As for Lewin himself, he's going to have that 10% upkeep reduction, which, while not doing anything for the units themselves, you gotta love upkeep reduction. A pass of damage resistance ability of the blessing of the lady and generally leadership and melee attack bonuses for his entire army against pretty much every single destruction faction other than the skaven because they don't exist anyway in addition lastly i guess number of uses for faction army ability which i take it is the line of Bretonia, but if it isn't, I guess we'll uh, we'll see what it is, but I'm pretty sure that that's, uh, and that's what it is. As for the gameplay setup this time around, doing a little bit different than what I usually do. Uh, for the end game scenario, I've actually dialed it down from 100 to 150, which is what I usually do down to 50, but we're going to do it at turn 50 instead of turn 100 instead, so we'll be a lot weaker, and I'd like to see what it looks like when it throws a wrench in into the middle of the campaign. In later campaigns, I may dial it up to 75 or something, but uh, well, I'd like to see how this looks. As for the particular uh, end game, it's going to be the Vampiric Ascension, mostly because there's at least Moussillon and the uh, uh, and the Kemmler's faction nearby, so they will at least spawn close to us, and nobody else other than the Wild Hunt are really close enough to bother with, and frankly, we're probably going to be allied with the Wood Elves, so I don't want to do the Wild Hunt. Lastly, for the setup, we're going to go very hard, very hard, as I always do, and then the AI stats modifier is going to be bumped up to max, which with SFO, I think, is even more considerable, and just by virtue virtue of the way that the uh, units are rebalanced. Anyway, that's about it for me. All glory to the algorithm, and let's crush some peasants. On for the lady! Alrighty, here we go, Bretonia. I have not played you for absolute ages, so hopefully I remember how things go. Now, this is SFO Bretonia, so there's going to be a bunch of additional systems as well, which should be pretty interesting. Now, chivalry is... Okay, let's just give this a quick read. Uh, when and avoid unchivalrous actions to progress through chivalry levels and receive various bonuses, and they seem to be pretty okay and uh, the ability to use the Green Knight as well. Uh, we achieve heroic victories to gain Blessings of the Lady, which provide protection against physical damage, complete challenges and pledged care 
pledged rather by your characters towards vows and troths which have always been around and gain rewards and lastly maintain balance of using peasants as in oppress peasants but if you oppress them too hard they won't work very well Although, in my opinion, we should just oppress them harder. But anyway, uh, so these are the vows of various kinds. And of course, Lewin already has them completed, so he already has uh, the bonuses of whether they be stats or whether they be the ability to use the various types of knights. We do, however, also have these vows and troughs on you. Damsel of the Heavens, gonna have to replace you with the Damsel of Life at some point, but uh, let's see, your first troth gives you Valor Generated plus one, Corruption Reduction, and Growth Increase, which is fine. And as to what we pledge, five hero actions, be present in a region where building is completed, and rank up five times. Yeah, that's the easy one. Of course, we'll rank up five times, especially in Lewin's army, and it should be pretty darn quick. And then we have Valor, which we clearly generate every turn from those who have completed their vows, and which we will be using, like the various other systems, like for Croc Gar, for those who watch the uh, uh, Croc Gar campaign. To upgrade the units now in terms of what upgrade ooh, 20 percent casualty or punishment rate now i am working under the assumption that we will probably replace every single one of these units at some point i do think the heroism of sympathy which allows us the ability to dismount is going to be very nice and useful hmm um, but i still think that the heroism of renewal is probably going to be the best pick here yeah, and maybe we'll get a few additional knights in... Hmm... Yeah, I'm gonna go with Heroism of Renewal. This will allow us to essentially charge our knights without worrying too much about the damage they might take, which I think is probably going to be superior. And the Heroism of Indomitable is great, but it's only if hit points are less than 50%, so if the knights are already hurt, they'll fight harder, but... Ideally, we won't allow them to get all that hurt. Uh, let's go for Renewal. And Renewal, and Renewal, and we have enough for all five units. Fantastic. And then whether these guys get hurt or not, we won't care that much. You also have Renewal, and you also have Indomitable, and then you have, ooh, Immunity to Contact effects. Quite nice as well, but I'm still going to go with Renewal. The thing is, the Pegasus Knight... Uh, will probably later be replaced by Royal Pegasus Knights, in which case this whatever this unit has doesn't matter. Anyway, there goes all of our Valor, but you gotta spend Valor to make Valor folks, so let's make some Valor. Alright, first enemy army, a couple of Crypt Ghouls, a couple of Black Knights, looking for some night-on-night -night action, always a fun time, and a bunch of zombies, which shouldn't matter, at the very least not in the hands of the AI, which is, let's face it, pretty poor at uh, wielding the vampire counts, at least in the early game. Here we go, battle one. Alrighty, very well. Just like I've been saying in my Eltharian campaign, uh, the old lords certainly don't uh, make long speeches like the new lords do. Anyway, here we go. Battle 1. We're gonna have some fun by knocking out a few zombies and trying out our knights who are already headed into combat against the enemy knights uh, as well. Obviously, we are gonna do a little bit of rock, paper, scissoring, so the black knights will be facing off against the Knights of the Realm because they're anti-large, while the enemy zombies and such will get charged by our Knights Errant. There we go. First of the glorious charges of the Bretonian Cavalry. Hundreds if not thousands more to be seen through the rest of the campaign. And the charge with that diamond formation or lance formation, whatever, is quite nasty. That single charge, if I can spot the enemy units, has taken exactly half of the HP off of that unit of Crypt Ghouls. It hasn't really killed any of them, um, but half HP is pretty darn decent. And uh, we can simply uh, cycle charge. Anyway, 
that's exactly what the knights of the uh, uh, the knights errant rather are doing. They're going to move right through all those ghouls and then charge right into the back of them. While the knights errant or the knights of the realm rather, with their anti large, are going to poke poke away and show their lance superiority against the uh, whites of the uh, uh, of the black knights. In addition to that, we've got our other units moving in, namely the peasants, and we got more knights fighting in the background as well. The uh, Pegasus knights working together with another unit of knights of the realm to crush uh, the enemy black knights between them and quickly make them return, or return them to their graves. The knights errant are over here fighting the enemy zombies and being anti-infantry are a little bit better at it, although we will be sending them some help in the form of the other uh, knights errant or the knights of the realm rather uh, prepare for me to get very confused between the different names of the knights a very nice charge as it knocks basically the entire zombie unit down and once again takes about half of their hp off though all the units over on this side of the map are having a pretty bad time the knights errant return as they charge in back into combat hitting the back of these uh, crypt ghouls here while the peasants are keeping them in place. Of course, we don't really care what happens to any of the peasants here because these are unshielded peasants and they will all be replaced relatively quickly. And there we go. So if they take casualties, it's no biggie. On the other hand, we'll still be using them for the uh, next few battles. Luan is also facing off against the enemy Vampire Lord, although he appears to be getting distracted at least a little bit uh, by the zombies. Which does make sense to some degree, but he has the help of the uh, various knights and the enemy lord has merely zombies to uh, be using. And the zombies don't outnumber the knights, which means the battle is not going to go their way. Balance of power is about... 90% in our favor. We're doing a little bit of cycle charging over in the background, moving away from the zombies, letting that crumbling effect take effect and damage the enemies more. And then charging back in once they've uh, taken a little bit of extra damage and once we've uh, gained a little bit of our vigor back and our charge bonuses. Got to love a mobile army. It's one of the uh, really fun things about playing Britonia. Especially against immobile factions like the, well, like early game vampire counts and like, uh, and like the dwarfs. And you can achieve so much just by virtue of mobility. Mobility of nobility. Alrighty, and it looks like the enemy lord is surrounded. I can't quite tell whether he's dissipating or crumbling away, but I'm sure he will be in a few moments. Uh, he's actually still about at half HP, so good for him. But the rest of his army is, uh, well, the worse for wear. They have failed to kill the peasants. The knights have knocked those zombies down. Nice charge, nice charge. Alrighty, and with that, the balance of power shifts fully in our favor, the enemy lord crumbles away, and the first battle is ours. And don't have to chase, because that's one of the great things about fighting the dead, they all crumble away, if they don't come back, but I don't think in the first battle they do, let's find out for sure. Alright, there we go. Easy little debut battle, and hey, we got a Sword of Strife as a reward, which ain't too bad. Certainly can't complain. I uh, was a little bit not careful enough with Luan. I gotta remember that he is not yet a god among men, as uh, he's obviously low level and still a little bit fragile. He may have the heart of a lion, but only the body of a cub until he gets uh, a little bit higher in levels. Let's execute those captives, because because, hmm, 990 gold ain't too bad, though. Huh, I am tempted by it. Charge bonus plus 10 and campaign movement range. I would imagine that we can reach the first town regardless of what we do. So I think we'll ransom captives despite the uh, small loss in chivalry because we gain a decent amount anyway. Then, 
Yeah, we can still reach Long Yi. In fact, we have plenty of movement remaining, so we'll do that in a second. Ah, uh, Lionhearted, there it is, but useless to us right now as we have neither Stand Your Ground nor Rally. Vigor loss reduction is always very nice to have. And then there is Inspiring Presence. Hmm. I imagine this might actually be auto-resolvable, so I think... Unit experience per turn is kind of meh. No, I think we're going to go with basic training. The vigor, vigor loss reduction is always nice to have. Alrighty. Ooh, there's an island there. And... I think this should be weak enough for us not to bother with. There's no lord, there's no black knights, it's just fodder garbage. And I'd rather work towards uh, a more difficult battle. So we're going to occupy the place. Unlike so, and our first province is ours now. I'd love to go for that remnant of battle, but what we need to do ASAP is get to Marienburg and occupy it. I'm pretty critical for a Bretonia campaign, and obviously you can do without, but it is such a good location, a great port, lots of money to be made, and, uh, well, we're not going to let it go. So, let's upgrade. Uh, Kurun the village, we will also go for... Mm, we will need growth ASAP, but at the same time we will also need stables ASAP, though I guess this will unlock two more building slots very quickly, so we're free to do whatever. This will only allow us to build Yeoman, but we can build the Knights Errant very quickly at level 2. You know what, we're actually going to start with the stables and then proceed for the farm afterwards. Then, okay wait, let's see what these do. Venerate the Lady gives us 10 to control, which is great. Uh, research rate, chivalry, and construction costs, damn. Uh, some strong... Uh, some strong commandments for Bretonia. Upkeep reduction and income from buildings 15, but at the cost of control. Campaign movement range plus 30. Yes, that's what we're going to do. Campaign movement range plus 30. And wow, 60 growth out of the peasant's duty. Fantastic as well. Uh, the reason we want movement is because we want to hit Marienburg as fast as we can, so I'd rather not waste additional uh, points. I probably should have actually gone for Root Marcher here, but hopefully this will be sufficient. Uh, you, Florence, have leveled up, and... hmm... We probably want to get Curse of the Midnight Wind and Urn on Thunderbolt up and running ASAP. This will probably help heal you a little bit more, though. Nah, let's just do that, it's fine. And then we'll need some peasants, so let's get... Peasant Bowman. Plenty, you know what, let's go... One... One man at arms? Damn, that took all of our gold. Damn you, peasants, how are you so expensive? Uh, yeah, I think we'll do that. Four and three. Should be sufficient. Uh, the Peasant Bowmen are quite useful, after all. And then our first tech, which is, let's see, the Chivalric Code is going to be very important because it will enable us to confederate various other Bretonian factions. This all requires a decent amount of valor in order to get, which I'm sure will be great. Hmm. Oh, wow. It's bonuses and chivalry for victories against that specific faction, which is, once again, swell. Chivalric Code is very important. What do you do? Ooh, growth plus 10, early game, quite important. 10 construction cost reduction. You know what, I think what we'll do is economic investment first for four turns, then immediately into Chivalric Code right after, and then start confederating. And just that early game, 10 growth can be a, uh, a pretty huge difference. Then we're going to go into All Diplomacy. Artois wants to Diplomacy, and it looks like only Artois does. Actually, you know what we'll do? Leoness will trade with you friends. and don't bother with the defensive agreement like so and they're all going to die anyway it's fine Welcome and then we'll do Bretonia. the various bonuses or agreements with Shilfroy or is, this, is it supposed to be Shilfroy? I don't know uh, with Artois like so propose offer and that'll be a little bit more money because we don't care. We're not going to actually confederate these minor factions because they will all get killed by the dead and probably by the orcs as well, possibly even the Skaven and the Beastmen before we get to them. And But we have Marienburg to consider, so that's what we will do. Enter. Alrighty, let's see how quickly we can get there. And whether we can recruit at the same time while we move. I'd love to max out the uh, number of peasants in our army. 
so that we can assault the place with as many troops as possible. This is SFO, you gotta remember, and early game battles are gonna be a lot more difficult than vanilla early game battles, especially... Ooh, what do we have here? Physical resistance... Oh, stop that. Game, stop that. Stop that. <laughs> Alright, what do we have to do for this? Uh, reach rank 10 with a Luwin, and we get melee defense and physical resistance up. Pretty significant buff, I gotta say. Only enabled if in melee, of course, but that's just My fine. Alrighty, we can move reasonably far. Go for it. And build three more peasants to max it out at 10 out of 10 in peasant economy. Then we got one more turn until you're ready to go. And ah, these guys are building troops. Can't let them do that. All right. Let's get, let's say, two more speed. Now you go two men at arms and one more peasant bow. The thing is, if we are going to have to uh, assault the walls of Marienburg, we're definitely going to need bowmen to help us out. Though, of course, the towers are going to be a concern as well. Anyway, double-check Diplo in case anything new came up, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, we need to get friendly with Reichland, because generally, as I recall, even though I haven't played Bretonia in absolute ages, pro I think not since Total Warhammer 2, they're not going to be happy about us attacking Marienburg. Uh, military access. Join war against Warherd of the One-Eye. That'll do it. Mm. You know, we'll wait. It might be that in a couple of turns it'll fix itself anyway and it won't matter. So it's on the turn like so. We'll also want to move in and find the elves as fast as possible to enable trade agreements with them. And maybe even help them out against Nakari. But of course Marienburg takes priority. We also have to remember that uh, we... Oh. Maintain seven units of the following type, Knights of the Realm, and we get Errantry of the Realm, income from settlement buildings, plus one. Ooh, for 20 turns, so that's actually pretty considerable. The thing is, we may want to wait on this until we have significantly more settlements available to us. Hmm. Interesting. Establish a trade agreement with any... Fa oh, I just did that. <laughs> a little bit late game. And yes, there's the Shadow Legion, which is what I was concerned with. We have to make sure that we uh, are able to get back here before the Shadow Legion declares war on us, because, well, inevitably, they will. You, Marienburg, are you at war with anybody? No. Well, you're about to be. Directly attack my... Wait. I want to see if we can align with Reichland yet. No, we cannot. Okay. And gotta remember, we're also at war with Moussillon and the Skull Smashers. But that's okay. You? Actually, wait. No stance. This is campaign movement. Oh. And melee attack for cavalry as well as leadership, eh? Hmm. Will we still be able to reach the place? Yes, we will. Ah, oh, wait. It's campaign movement range. Reduction, yeah, that's fine. And that's probably the only one we'll use, so we'll do this, and then we'll declare war. Go for I'll it. Ignore that. All right, I'll let's obey. hope that they sally out. I sincerely doubt that they will, but who knows. And we are going to build one battering ram and one Mertonian the siege tower, and we'll see what we see. All righty. Then we'll want to get you up and running to get some Knights Errant. Was it Knights of the Realm or Knights Errant that we wanted? It's Errantry of the Realm, so it's Knights of the Realm. Okay, so we'll get a few uh, Knights Errant in here. Then we will want to get the Clay Pit up and running, and we will want to get Growth up and running as well. Ooh, we'll probably also want the Carpenter's Workshop ASAP. But the thing is, we can simply delete the uh, minute or the Rally Field here and build it somewhere else. Hmm, or we could build the Carpenter's Workshop at, shop rather at Marienburg, but for now, build the fields, we need more growth ASAP. And speaking of, switch to the Peasant's Duty to buff that growth up to 60. And we also need walls at Longi and possibly at Kurun, although Kurun's base garrison is pretty insanely strong, so we should be okay. Anyway, I believe that's all. And that's it, that's all, and oh, look at that, Middenland. Yeah, we could be friendly with Middenland, give us money. Indeed! Give us money, and hopefully by being friendly with Middenland, we'll be friendlier with the rest of the Empire. Alrighty. As we'll need the Empire to make artillery for us. Alright, let's see if Emil von Corden is willing to fight us outside of Marienburg, because if he is, we should be able to take it. And if he isn't, well, 
then we shall hope that we can die. Ah, you screwed up, Emil. You screwed up. This means that we will be facing off against, well, a little bit more than, well, let's say a full stack, because some of these units are still damaged. I guess Marienburg was upgraded, and the, uh, the garrison has not had time to fully build up. And I do believe this is an SFO thing, that the garrisons replenish much slower, which is certainly something you have to consider. Oh, I love SFO. Alrighty, anyway, here we go, round two. This is a make-or-break moment early game. Lance is ready! Alrighty, well, you say lance is ready, but you have a sword, my friend, and not a lance, so I'm just saying. <laughs> You're speaking for everybody else, but I guess that is the nature of a king, uh, to, speak for, uh, to speak for everybody. But anyway, or at least in an ideal scenario. Obviously, I don't count peasants and, and everybody. Because who would? Anyway, here we go. Should be a pretty fun battle. The enemy has a pretty massive pile of infantry, both of the missile and not-so-missile variety, melee variety. And our peasants will probably have a rather difficult time in dealing with them. We should not have a difficult time showing our knightly superiority against the Empire Knights. Although, uh, you know, I've grown a healthy respect for Imperial Knights in my own Carl campaign back in the day, and uh, still would not uh, underestimate them, let's say, even if regular Empire Knights are pretty bad. Anyway, the key thing here to do first is to knock out the two enemy mortars, which would very quickly be able to obliterate the ranks of our poor, poor peasants. And I say poor twice because they are both literally and figuratively poor. Uh, we are going to charge <laughs> There's going to be a lot of peasant bashing, again, both literally and figuratively, uh, throughout this uh, uh, throughout this campaign. But that's why we're all here anyway. Uh, anyway, anyway, the mortars, they have to go down, so we charge the artillery crew with both Lewin and our Pegasus Knights, which simply fly over the ranks of enemies. Granted, our Pegasus Knights are liable to take damage here, but that's okay. It'll be well worth it. In addition to that, we've got more units coming in as a uh, unit of Knights Errant and a unit of Knights of the Realm is going to try to loop around and hit those mortars in the back. Can't be letting those fire. And this is another reason why I thought the casualty replenishment is going to be super valuable. We can do things like this. Alrighty, and here we go, once again hitting those mortars, and hopefully the sheer mass of knights will enable us to crush them, and then and get the heck out of there before we're surrounded and destroyed by enemy halberds and pikes. And there we go. Both of the enemy mortars have routed, and it's time for Lewin and the knights to get out. Gotta love these um, in-battle, mid-battle, whatever lightning strikes uh, that we've uh, got going. In addition to that, while the cavalry has been distracting the enemy, it's allowed our infantry, missile, and melee to take decent positioning. We've got uh, the uh, pseudo-walls of the cliffs here, which we are going to block with our peasants, uh, choke, the, uh, uh, choke the choke point with the peasant bodies, and then the peasant bowmen will be able to fire upon the enemy army as they approach. Same thing goes over here, so we now have the superior terrain and our various faster moving units moving around in the back of the enemy army. I also had two of our knights, a realm and an errant, start the battle off here in the woods where they have been moving around hidden and will be going after the enemy range units once the enemy melee line is well and truly engaged. Anyway, that's enough, well, I was about to say that's enough yammering, but that's not quite true. And the rest of our units are going to move away and reposition themselves while the enemy tries to charge in against our peasants. I'm sure they will do reasonably well here. And huh? Knights, uh, well, I guess they didn't have enough mm, speed or mass to charge through, though I'm very sure that they would have, as those were the sword-wielding peasants. Alrighty, but the bow-wielding peasants will still be able to rack up kills regardless. 
And I like the I like the bright yellow and blue color scheme of the of the Marian burgers here. Camouflage is the color of fear after all, and you can spot these guys a mile away. Alrighty, Hannah, nice charge to you two. <laughs> Showing off compared to the rest of the uh, cohort of Knights of the Realm here. Alrighty, Knights of the Realm helping the peasants out a little bit, which is very unusual. Uh, <laughs> Uh, just so that they don't all die and so that we have a little bit more mass in the choke point. Over in the background we have the hidden units of knights that have arrived together with the help of the uh, uh, the flyers, the Pegasus Knights, and they're going after all of these free company militia and enemy crossbows. Of course the crossbows would win in a uh, shootout with our long, well not long, those are peasant bowmen. And thus, it's much better off that we destroy them and not allow them to uh, uh, to get engaged. Though, as we can see, the peasant bowmen are able to uh, knock a few of those crossbows out as well. Oh, lovely. Still holding against the enemies here, though halberdiers are definitely superior in combat to uh, uh, to peasant men at arms, spearmen at arms, whatever. Close enough. I've got a healthy respect for halberdiers as well. Plus, they're, like, very much an iconic unit for the Empire. Um, but in my own SFO Empire campaign, I basically use them to the, uh, uh, throughout Endgame as well. Despite their relatively low armor. Not so much... The same can't be said of the poor swordsmen here, who are looking like they want to get the heck out, rather than continue facing off against piles of peasants. Nice little jump in from Maluin as well, helping out against all those spikes, though we do have to be careful, as he is... let's see... He is close to half HP, and there's an Empire Captain and a General of the Empire to contend with. Another charge coming in from the Knights of the Realm, doing that uh, cycle charging, or continuing to do so, and breaking up their formations as they continue to fight our peasants. Obviously, the peasants wouldn't be able to hold without help. On the bright side, though, they do still hold, and while they do, our knights are absolutely obliterating the back line. Uh, one of the knights, Aaron, did get pretty badly damaged, down to 45 units. I think they were facing off against pikes and halberdiers, so hardly surprising. And But most of the enemy army has, in fact, collapsed. And it's just now a matter of, oh, that's going to be a lot of friendly fire, but hey, that's just they're just peasants. If anything, it's a bonus. Damn, I like the fancy sword of the of the Empire Captain there. Although I'm not actually particularly fond of Empire Captains as units, at least not in at least not in campaign. Or at the very least, not so much for what they can provide to the army as a entity, but so much as what they can provide the army as uh, buffers of other units. Which is fairly decent. Anyway, with that, it looks like the enemy army is shattered. The battle is ours, and now the long, long chase begins. I'm going to do my best to chase everything down, but it's kind of a waste of time here. And every single Bretonian battle, by virtue of the amount of knights that we have, will have a lot of chasing. So I'm just going to skip it. Although, well... I'm definitely going to build an all-peasant army, at least one all-peasant army as well, so we'll see how well they do and whether they survive. Maybe we'll send them on some suicide missions because it feels appropriate, uh, but we'll do it later. Alrighty, I don't know in what world that was supposed to be a Pyrrhic victory when all we mostly lost was a couple hundred peasants. Uh, about 400 peasants and uh, fairly little in the way of knights, so lies game, lies and slander. Let's offer them redemption to heal up so that we can hopefully out-resolve the remnants of Marienburg next turn. And there we go, and hello. Ensure that the following building has been completed for a 
free giant blade, a chapel of the lady. We'll work on it. I see the sightless are gone, which means that uh, Kinkwata is now well and truly ready to attack us. So we gotta we gotta hurry things up. Uh, armor of brilliance. So that is the quest item for Luan. We'll give this a nice read when we actually get this completed. But for now, we'll wait. Luan, let's level you up and then let's head into Marienburg here. Mm, virtue of empathy empathy not for for not for peasants uh let's go for inspiring presence and we may as well start leveling up knights of various kinds which uh, huh actually glorfinial's progeny is kind of weak uh, uh the buffs for the knights are pretty mad i mean look at the buffs for the uh for the infantry here 12 armor and six melee attack uh, give me that we already have strong charge bonuses, and, well, I guess the weapon strength is nice, but I'd rather those buffs. Eh. And speed for flyers. Does Glorfinial's progeny include Grail Guardians and stuff? I see Hermit Knights, so yes, the Grail Guardians are here. And, ah, this also applies to the foot version of the Knights as well. So for them who have lost their charge bonus by virtue of being on foot, and this is much stronger, eh? Interesting. Interesting indeed. Uh, yeah, nonetheless, we're going to go for Guardians. And that, uh, Glorfinial's progeny. I like so. And we'll probably at some point want to start saving up points because we're going to get some good stuff unlocked. Respected by all... Ooh, allegiance points increase and diplomatic relations all factions. Oh, that's fantastic. I wonder, do we have to pick one of these? Hmm. Oh, wow, wait, these unlock, these both unlock at level 10, eh? Uh, you know what? We're gonna have to start saving points very soon at that rate. Anyway, uh, let's go for Harmonic Convergence for you now. We'll probably eventually start using you as a tech thief rather than what you're currently doing, but that'll be later on. Take Marienburg and... What? Guys, am I crazy or did I... Did I not build... I swear I... Huh? Did I cancel them? No. I swear I built the Bretonian battering ram and... Well, the, the siege tower and the battering ram. Huh. Well, that's irritating. Uh, try building them now. Hopefully they work this time. Maybe I just forgot. I don't know. Maybe I canceled by accident? Could be a possibility. A little bit disappointing that uh, Lewin doesn't have Siege Attacker, and but I suppose he'll have it when he has Beaky here. Yeah, he'll get Siege Attacker on Beaky and not on the Royal Pegasus, so we'll need to wait until level 14. And though fortunately that should be pretty soon. On to buildings. And what do we have here? A uh, rally field for various other types of men at arms, which will give us shielded men at arms, which are going to be considerably more useful. Let's do it. Although 1500 gold is a little bit, uh, a little bit steep, let's say. But keep building, keep upgrading. It's all still going to be needed. And actually, out of curiosity, what do we have here? A virtue of knightly temper, so a stronger knight lord. Virtue of the penitent, area hex, melee defense reduction. Interesting. And ward save. Prophetess. I was just seeing if there was something that would allow for better management in the uh, in the territory. Hmm. And until oh wait, we can mm, well if another army, and then we'll probably build one, and we can build a paladin. Well, that I very much like a uh, paladin with the enfeebled defense. Oh, that's real nice. Versus. The Virtue of the Impetuous Knight, which is great. Once again, that exceptional offensive, plus 15, but it's only enabled if hit points are less than 50%, and Paladins are incredibly tanky. So I think we'll go for the Virtue of the Penitent instead. Enabled if leadership is higher than broken, so pretty much at all times for Paladins. Lovely. And that'll sort of stack with my vow, or, well, you know, uh, more auras is what I'm getting at. Matthias Sigibald, you are going to be our first paladin, and then we'll probably have at least a couple in Lewin's army. Uh, wait. 
Uh, training is relatively useless, so we have quality feed and storied hero. We'll have to pick one, but a little bit later. True hero, Bretoni upkeep for lords and heroes, not necessary at the current time. So let's go blade master and let's go hard to hit and try to get foe seeker ASAP. Deadly blade, beautiful. Alrighty, didn't even realize we could build the paladin immediately. Uh, still salty about those, but let's just end the turn then, and we'll get it next. Although, wait. How pissed is Reichland about this whole situation? Not that pissed. Oh, the uh, treaties with Middenland is counteracting or counterbalancing the war with Marienburg. You know Alright, that works for me. And that works for me so. indeed. Peace with Marienburg? No. Uh, we are actually going to peace out with them, but uh, uh, once we take Marienburg. I was hoping to do it this turn, but game is being obnoxious. Or wait. Yeah, yeah, no, we ended the turn, so they should have been built. Hmm, well, whatever. As long as they get built this turn, we'll be fine. I don't have the orcs to contend with here as well. Ah. Huh? Oh. We'll have the orcs to contend with right now. Well, 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 orcs, you want to play with the Luin? I'm certainly happy to oblige. A little bit more variety in the first episode, which is always a, uh, a happy thing. Here we go again. Alrighty, this is your realm. Oh, I like the uh, sort of dark skies on one side of the map, but uh, light on the other. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Anyway, I'm pretty happy about the fact that the orcs attack us here. If we can manage to destroy the Marienburg reinforcements, we should actually be able to occupy Marienburg this turn, and thus uh, not have wasted another turn, which would be just a lovely. So we're definitely going to deploy some troops, namely these units of knights, specifically to hopefully surround and destroy the Marienburgers. As for the orcs, it is a fair few of them, and we'll see if our peasants can hold. The melee peasants are damaged. Lewin can no longer fight, at least not at the current time, against an enemy lord because he's down to, let's say, 25% or something along those lines of his HP. And But we'll see. But hey, works. Variety. Love it. We fought the dead. We fought Marienburgers, so Reichlanders essentially, at least in terms of, uh, well, Imperial troop types. And lastly, we'll be fighting orcs in this first episode. Anyway, here we go. The enemy uh, lord and hero have arrived, and the goal is to surround them with bodies, such that they can't escape. The Pegasus Knights are also pretty good at surrounding and killing off single entity units and lords, because for whatever reason, I think their hitboxes might be slightly smaller than that of the uh, regular knights, I'm not sure, but they're pretty good at surrounding a unit, as you can see here. They're all around that one poor lord, and hopefully we can kill them off like this, or at the very least, once they break, not let them escape. The issue with this, of course, is the fact that that's three elite units that won't be participating in the rest of the battle until the... Uh, until those guys are dead, which is liable to take a while. On the bright side, though, we have pretty good setup in terms of the terrain here. Uh, high elevation for our piles of peasant bowmen, which will hopefully not get hit in the back. And then we'll try to hold the choke point as we, uh, as we like to do with our spears while the peasants keep firing down on the orcs. Uh, let's see if it works out. Alrighty, shields up and moving in are the orc boys and goblins. Uh, the orc boys will of course win in a one-on-one -on -one against the uh, peasants, so we gotta reduce their numbers as much as possible. Well, of course we can buff up the peasants at least temporarily with the harmonic convergence. Although it looks like the peasants are taking range damage both from the enemy arrows and from our own. <laughs> Uh, there's that harmonic convergence coming in to, for at least 40 seconds, make them strong. 107 armor and 57 melee attack and defense. They will be able to hold while that's up. 
Though what happens after, well, remains to be seen. They also have a Lewin's leadership aura helping out, if nothing else. More peasants fighting some gobos over here, and we'll need to help them out. But we do have knights moving in as well. And look at that glorious charge. Instant half HP on those poor goblin archers. And they go flying. Prepare for a lot of, uh, uh, for a lot of air from charges throughout this campaign. Now the knights are in. Beautiful. <laughs> it's going to be a long, long time before I get tired of seeing those charges. Alrighty, well, at the very least, the peasants are going to be safe from the uh, hits from the enemy range units. It looks like we were able to kill the Empire Captain as well, but the General still remains to be killed. So Pegasus Knights keep working on it. We'd really, we really could use those extra Knight units, but at the very least, the three Knights that have managed to uh, peel away have managed to destroy every single one, or at the very least, shatter or break every single one of the enemy archers, the Goblin and Orc alike. And there's another charge. More gobos go flying as we charge through the goblin archers into the back of those orc boys. The uh, peasants here will not hold for much longer as they're down to, I don't know, about 15% of their HP. And then we do have a second unit that we're going to switch them out with before they wrap. Ah, too late. And they're going to break. Hopefully they'll come back. We do have one more unit here and the arrows continue falling from our peasants. Of course, once we have men at arms with longbows, these guys are going to be a lot more deadly. I'd like to see how effective we can make a peasant army with, uh, uh, with us, uh, foe. Alright, keep on firing. Oh, it's so weird seeing, uh, uh, seeing bows fire away. Weird as in, because I've been playing the, uh, of the High Elves melee only Eltharian campaign. And I got used to just not using archers at all. And now it's archers again. But at least in this army we will, uh, well, we'll be getting rid of them as soon as we can build piles upon piles of uh, knights. Anyway, here come, speaking of knights, here come uh, the Pegasus Knights landing among the boys and uh, trying to go after the enemy lord here. It looks like they were indeed successful and the general and the empire captain were both destroyed. Now it's just time for the knights to do their thing, charging into the back line of every single orc blob. And we don't even really need to kill them, we just need to do enough damage to force them to rout. As of course we'll be able to chase them now. Alright, well done. It looks like the orc boys are shaken, the goblins are wavering as well, the enemy lords at half HP, and we're still firing away. A couple of our units are also chasing enemies down in the background, those that routed first. And we are being reasonably careful this time and moving our peasants such that they fire on units that are running rather than units that are still engaged in combat as obviously we don't want our own units killing our own. At least not while the knights are engaged. We were perfectly fine to allow them to kill our own peasants earlier. But that is simply the natural order of things. Alrighty, and judging by the fact that the Knights Errant or the uh, Pegasus Knights have lifted off, we are good. It looks like with that, the enemy army shatters once again, and Lewin has yet another victory under his belt. Hopefully this will allow him to heal up, because I'm sure he wants to be in combat a little bit more. And, <laughs> uh, yeah. We just need to get him regeneration. He does have a source of regeneration. I don't remember when we get it, um, but when we do, it will we'll be a lot less concerned about him uh, taking damage in this manner. Anyway, plenty of works to chase, but I'll do it off screen, so here comes a cut. Alrighty, well our knights had some fun getting damn 47k damage uh, on one of the uh, knights of the realm and then 24 and only 9k on you knights errant. Uh, well you are weaker than the uh, knights of the realm but still damn that's a pretty uh, pretty big disparity. Hmm. 
I wonder why this particular... Oh, but, uh... Well, no. I was about to say, one of these units was with the, uh... Uh, with the brigade that was destroying Marienburg's Lord and Hero, so that was probably this unit, which explains at least some of the disparity. And nonetheless, nonetheless, everybody else did well, plenty of damage on our various peasant bowmen, though you gotta remember that the numbers are inflated, and due to this being SFO. More importantly, the orcs actually helped us out, because we don't have to end the turn, we can occupy uh, Marienburg right now, and hopefully still heal up. Yes, indeed. Alrighty, that is fantastic. Artois has been destroyed, as expected by the uh, um, by the Barrow Legion, which is, well, I'll say something of an issue. Uh, hmm, we do have orcs here, but also Fort Bray nearby. I have to wonder... Uh, win five battles. Working on a game, working on immune to attrition. Oh, that's wonderful, minus the fact that it isn't super useful to us at the current time. Hmm. Uh, what? Oh, okay, okay, okay. For, for a second, I thought the uh, Reichlanders were disliking us a little bit too. Trade agreement's nearly ready to go. We're not going to give them 3k for it, but uh, certainly is something soon available. Let's uh, get that Cinnabar mining pit up and running ASAP as well. You're growing nicely there, Marches of Kurun. Now the question, do we go for Grung Zint? Or do we try to take on Fort Berg Bray? The thing is, we could certainly take the fort out. It is late in the day we could also peace out with these guys and get 8k from them, which demanding. is quite lovely. Hmm. I fear that if we take the turn to go to Grung Zint, we won't be able to loop back around to go for Fort Berg Bray. No, I guess we could try to find out. I would really... Hmm. I mean, do you have a garrison here? The problem is we don't know how many will be built by the orc war boss here and depending on how many it'll inform us as to whether this army will be able to defend at marienburg by itself mind you or not uh wow oh. ah you wouldn't be able to join pally that's a shame at least i don't think so that's fine mm. what's the likelihood that you get upgraded next turn i'm gonna hope low Although the units are a little bit hurt here. Well, nonetheless, Lewin, I just go to Grungzint right now. And then in circle, Pyrrhic victory. Okay, it looks like we won't be able to auto-resolve. Of that one, Matthias, can you in fact join the army? Yes, you can. That will be beautiful. Alrighty. And oh, well then, join the army, you shall go. Joining the army, you shall go. Whatever. Alright, beautiful. And we may as well level everybody up, though... Uh, let's get, uh, ooh, Crown of Bretonia, leadership plus five. Well, I guess that'll help the peasants, but you know what? A root marcher, just in case we can still hit Fort Berg Bray. Uh, the damsel will also get a level, and we'll go for the Curse of the Midnight Wind at the first, oh, the Wind Blast. No, you know what? Let's get Wind Blast in there in the early game, is what I was going to say. Yeah, so this is still going to be Pyrrhic Victory and kill off all the peasants, which normally would... Uh, uh, would make me happy, but in this particular case, we can't afford to sit around and recruit more, though we will want to. Speaking of, we may want to have a additional lord recruited, although at 350 upkeep, it might not be worth our time. Hmm. Although, another, another consideration. If we were to get a Prophetess of Life, and simply follow the army around, we would be able to get Earthblood cast upon Lewin in battle where needed. It might be worth the extra 287 upkeep. Leadership and upkeep reduction probably go for you. Yeah, you know what? I think I like the idea. It's a little bit on the expensive side, but I don't necessarily think it's the wrong idea. You are missing two troops as well, and oh... I just realized, maybe I should have actually, uh... Well, you know what, we'll send you back to Kuran and have you recruit troops there. We will need a recruiter as well. And, but for now, let's get a couple more men-at-arms right here, which will complete all of the cash we have. Anyway, I think with that, we're pretty much out of time here, so I'm going to have to call it three cinematic battles after all. Unlike the uh, mini-campaign, the uh, mini... High Elves melee only campaign I'm currently running 
three is already quite a few cinematic battles per episode as that's uh, a little bit more editing and this is going to be a full campaign so yeah strap yourselves in anyway i'm gonna call it here next time we take grungzint probably Fort Bray, unless i decide to fully peace out with these guys the thing is we don't need to hold our now or gorsell as they would be annoying to hold against the norskins and against the uh, incursions from the shadow legion and it'll probably be more advantageous to deal with the dead in Britonia itself rather than deal with uh, holding the coastline and I do expect that these guys will get destroyed either way by whatever is around them as they are significantly weakened by having lost Marienburg. Anyway I digress as I usually do more Britonia and Lewin to come so stay tuned don't forget to leave a like and comment all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching.